Susan Crabtree, Washington Examiner, got a great piece out. Exclusive Secret Service missed man with ele with gun in elevator with Obama. We discussed this uh, briefly a little bit earlier. Let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of it with Susan. Susan, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for taking time to be on with us this morning. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. It's been a busy day, like yesterday, and I filed another story this morning, so a little follow-up. So it's, it's, it's busy, but um, good stuff. I mean, I think that the Secret Service needs more scrutiny. They do important, very important, dangerous work, and they have a much more difficult life than I do. Uh, but there's been some serious problems and breaches in recent weeks even so one of the things that uh, i guess leaped out at me is first off really there's people who uh, operate elevators still a and second right. you, you weren't told to turn your gun in that day that those are two good questions you know it was very strange because there are there are operators when the president travels from what i understand my sources are telling me that that but that usually the advanced team gives the list and really clears these people quite extensively before they're allowed to get within arm's reach of the president, especially with a gun. He was not supposed to have the gun. No security contractors uh, are allowed to have guns, even if they carry them normally during their warmer work day at the buildings where Obama visits. Susan Crabtree with us. She uh, broke the story yesterday about this uh, gun in the elevator with the president at the, at the CDC. This is also a guy uh, who has a, a criminal record. So I, I guess you have to ask, A, how does a guy with a criminal record like that work as basically security armed for the CDC, one, a, a, and then two, why was he in that elevator with the president? Well, like I said, you know, uh, he works for a private security contracting firm, and he, he would normally work at the CDC. Uh, I don't know why that security contracting firm... Neither that firm nor the CDC looked into his criminal background. Uh, when they found out, the agents found out that day. Here, here's how it all went down. They were in the elevator. He was operating the elevator. They, when Obama and his security detail went to leave, he started taking videos of the president on his phone. The Secret Service agents told him to stop. He did not stop, and he was acting unprofessionally and strangely. So they basically collected him and took him and interviewed him with his supervisor there. His supervisor fired him on the spot and told him to give up his gun. <laughs> it was at that point that my sources tell me that the agents discovered, the Secret Service agents discovered that he even had a gun, which alarmed them greatly. And uh, then they did the, the criminal background check and found out that he had uh, three convictions of assault. So, other than his termination, what happens to him? Other than, uh, I, I guess uh, the, the Secret Service can do what they want with you, but you know, you're you're a nuisance taking pictures and all that. It turns out now now you're fired, and now give me the gun. Uh, are, are they looking to go any further with this guy? You know, they are not uh, being that specific with me, and they basically are are in uh, defensive mode right now. Uh, they're not. They're not even. They returned my phone call, but they did not give me a statement about it at all. Um, so they would get back to me, but they never did. So I don't know what they're pursuing. Um, the the guy didn't commit a crime per se, but yes, he was acting strangely. He lost his job over it, and I think the the real questions need to be asked of the Secret Service, the CDC, and this private firm for why they go ahead and hire this guy. Susan Crabtree with us here, Washington Examiner. It's Riley and Scott on WRK. She broke the story yesterday on the gun in the elevator with the president. And your follow-up this morning, uh, Susan, which is at uh, WashingtonExaminer.com, uh, reporting that Secret Service managers told the agents not to file a written report. So theoretically, if there's no written report, there's no investigation, no corrective measures being taken inside the Secret Service, right? Well, that would be the logical conclusion. Uh, Basically, what I was told is that they were told no paperwork on this incident and that that message was, came from a manager. I do not know where that manager was located. They don't know how high up that reached, but it was uh, the Atlanta field office uh, because there's field offices all over the country where Secret Service agents uh, do advance work for presidential trips. 
uh, they were told not to write any type of a report. And to me, that goes to the very question about whether there's accountability in the organization. Uh, the director, Julia Pearson, was just grilled severely, I mean, rebuked, upbraided by uh, Congress yesterday at a hearing, an oversight hearing, and they were asked her, specifically many lawmakers, why do your junior officers feel like they can't disagree with their managers, they can't report security concerns that, that are a different version of events than other senior members have put out. And there's a specific incidence of that, um, if you want to go into it, in a 2011 shooting of the White House where mm -hmm. uh, one of the officers, Carrie Johnson, said she was afraid to tell, to disagree with the senior officers. She said that the incident was car backfiring at first and then later said it was gang members shooting at each other in cars driving by the White House. But actually there were seven bullets that ended up being lodged inside at the residence in the upper White House area. Susan Crabtree with us, Washington Examiner. It's Riley and Scott on WRK. And I know this is a large question and a, and a question that uh, lawmakers and others are trying to get a handle on, but what the heck is going on with the Secret Service? In the prostitution scandal, you mentioned the, the, uh, the, the shooting at the White House. They didn't know about it for four days. You have the guy running into the White House. You have this incident. You kind of alluded to it there. Is it, is it a management style problem? Is it an instructional problem? What is going on? Well, I've been told uh, by my sources that they refer to it as a culture of cover-up. And that they, it's, it's like this big family, and they protect one another. And if you screw up, you, you don't report it, or and I'll protect you if that if that is the case, and it's just becoming, it's sort of spiraling out of control now. It's, it's, a, it's been a long time practice and at the agency, but it's, it's really coming to a head now that they've had so many incidents. Uh, and Julia Pearson was, was elevated, uh, Obama elevated her top position to take care of sort of the, the chauvinistic culture, male dominant mm -hmm. culture of the Secret Service. But it really didn't change the management because she was the chief of staff to Mark Sullivan uh, since 2008 before she was appointed in 2013. Susan Crabtree, Washington Examiner, WashingtonExaminer.com. She broke the story yesterday. Follow up this morning at WashingtonExaminer.com. Susan, thanks so much for the time this morning. Great reporting, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Would be wonderful. Thanks for having me.